This is the Jail Ministry Podcast. The J-A-I-L, or Jesus Acts and Inmates Lives Ministry, is Christ-centered and provides programs focused on the prevention and intervention for the incarcerated. Jail Ministry also provides support to offenders, criminal justice professionals, victims, and their families. Thank you for your continued financial assistance. For more information, visit jailmen.org. Now, here's today's lesson. Uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. This is uh, Evangelist Eric Walton over here at GL Ministry in Belton, Texas. We're having part two of Wise Investing, amen. And uh, we're in Matthew chapter 25. Uh, we've already did verses 14 through 19, so we'll be starting at verse 20. Uh, we'll read a few verses, have a word of prayer, and get going from there. And this is the parable of Jesus telling about the ta talents, amen. I call, I titled it Wise Investing, all right. But it's the parable, and the word parable means Jesus is going to tell an everyday story that everybody understands, all right. And and it, it, it everybody understands it, but then it has a spiritual meaning. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the spiritual people don't just get the surface meaning. They get the deeper meaning. And that's what we're going to be doing today, continuing in verse 20. So let's read a few verses and uh, have a word of prayer, and then we'll get to our lesson for today. Verse 20, so he who ever see the five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, he's talking to the Lord Jesus now, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. All right. Verse uh, 19 is where uh, the, 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 the Lord of these guys, of those servants, came and settled accounts with him. The servants here are those of the people who have received the Lord Jesus Christ or believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's who the servants are. Everybody's listening. Some of them are listening to criticize. But everybody's listening. All right. Because Jesus could really tell a story. But some of those there listening weren't there to get the spiritual meaning. They wanted to come over there and try to pick at Jesus. So, but they got the surface meaning. That's all they got. Let me continue on. Verse 1. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll get going with this part of the lesson. Father, thank you for your word. Pray your anointing on it, dear Heavenly Father. Forgive me where I failed you at it. And uh, pray for the, the, the guys and gals listening. Pray for their families. Pray for their legal situation. But most of all, God, I pray that they would understand the teaching of your word and I would present it in such a way where they can understand it. Pray for jail ministry. Pray for greater days ahead than behind. Thank you for what's going on so far. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Verse 20, go back there with me and we'll start right there. So he had received, now this is a continuation of what was said at the end of uh, the first section we did. Verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants, it's been 2,000 years, all right, it's been 2,000 years since Jesus left, okay, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The settling of the counts is, what did you do with the spiritual talents and abilities that God gave you? All right? And, and he's, want, he's, he's coming to make, a, make an account of it. Amen? Now, some of, obviously, everybody didn't live no 2,000 years. But, so those people that went up there, now he's, it's going to come a day. All right? When the rapture happens, that's when I believe every believer from, from uh, uh, the, the apostles to now. To whenever that rapture is, we're going to give an account when we get up there. And then there'll be the banquet, uh, the believer's banquet up in heaven. And uh, we'll all receive our uh, blessings or rewards for what we did with the talents that we were given. A five-talent guy is a quite talented man. A two-talented man, a two-talent guy, he's talented too. One talent, uh, uh, that's where I'd say I was at, amen. And just because that one talent guy didn't do nothing with it, that isn't what I'm saying. I'm saying some of us got one talent, some of us got two. Some of us may have ten. All right? Jesus is just giving some numbers. It's not the number here so much that you need to pay attention to. Is what are you doing with your abilities? Uh, and I gave several examples in the first, in part one of this message. So let's go on. I can't do part one all over again now today. 
uh, you listen to that and then read, listen to this one. So uh, uh, the five talent guy came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gotten five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done. What a tremendous blessing to have God say to you, well done, servant. Amen. Good and faithful servant. Well done. Notice he didn't say great. He said good. That's good. Amen. And, and that's what God wants us to do with our spiritual ability and talents. Amen. Understand something. If nobody listens to my message, he's still going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Why? I faithfully and truly taught what he told me to teach y'all. All right. So I'm going to get mine. So when you invite somebody, you're going to get your, if you try to teach your children, you should be writing letters to your children. If you're incarcerated, tell them, hey, daddy or mama messed up and uh, uh, I'm trying to do right now. And why don't we read these passages together and we'll, we'll, we'll communicate, we'll dialogue back and forth. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell stories back and forth to each other and, and ask each other by the past. That way you can be a spiritual parent still, even though you're incarcerated. Amen. And uh, uh, so, and by the way, faithful servant. I always point this out. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why we go through every verse of the Bible. That's why we go through everything. I spend 99% of my time in the New Testament with y'all. And even if I've used something out of the Old Testament, I use it as an illustration to, to teach a, 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 a New Testament uh, principle that God has put down in the Bible. So, and then he said, good and faithful servant. Again, he's talking to saved people when he says servant. Unsaved people are not his servants. He will use the devil. He will use unpeople, uh, unsaved people. To, uh, per, per, uh, he says, I'll chastise you with the sword of the whip of men. And he's saying, I'm going to use these unsaved nations to judge Israel um, when they were being bad and stuff like that. And same thing for us saved people. If that principle holds true. He'll do that with us. You were faithful over a few things. Just five things that you had to use. You resisted all this worldly, fleshly, carnal stuff. And did the spiritual thing. We're not talking about you were a preacher. All right. Whatever he called you to. If you're a surgeon, you were the best surgeon. If you were a, a, a ditch digger, you were the best ditch digger. If you were a surveyor, you were the best one. You were faithful of a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Look at the rewards. This guy, uh, because the five and two, because they, they did what they did. They may, the five may be over New York City. There might be millions of souls there then, again. All right? Uh, the two talent, he may be over uh, Greenville, South Carolina. There's a couple hundred thousand people in that town. You know? But we're going to rule and reign with him. All right? So, uh, let me go on. Verse 22. He also had received the two talents. Came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. Watch. Same commendation. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. The implication there is if you don't take your talents and use them, you won't have the joy of the Lord. Amen. You won't have the joy. You might have, the, all three of these people are saved. The one talent guy, he didn't do nothing with it. He buried it in the ground from part one. All right. That is not what you're supposed to do with it. He got saved. That's why you see these people. They really did get saved when you took them to church and they pray. Oh, Lord, come to my heart. Oh, Jesus, save me. They may have cried and did all this other stuff. Blah, blah, blah. They really did get saved. But they never did nothing with it. Amen. They never did nothing with it. Sometimes, I, I, you know, I got one kid. Uh, they're the smartest kid we got to. They didn't do anything with it. I believe with all my heart. She's under severe chastisement of the Lord right now as we speak. It isn't, it isn't that God, and, and why is she being chastised? With, you're not doing anything with it. You're 40 something, 42 years old. Ain't did nothing with it. Extremely talented, but unforgiving in other things. Not following God, you know. Verse 24, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Y'all get, get his point there in that part. Verse 20, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I, know you, I knew you to be a hard man. I'm going to stop right there. God is not a hard man. Okay? This man 
is uh, uh, speaking blasphemy. For God so loved the world, he died on a cross for everybody. It is finished, John 19, 30. He paid the sin debt for all of humanity. The fact that he gave you five talents, two talents, one talent. He's a very loving and gracious God. We may ask, ask him things and he'll give us advice liberally. Okay, to say that he's a hard man is not true. All right. This uh, uh, one talent unfaithful servant here, uh, um, reaping where you have not sown. He did sow seed. He came down here and died on the cross for us, left this big Bible for us. Holy Ghost, uh, 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 preachers, evangelists, uh, radio communication, streaming, all these things. Um, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. He did all that stuff. Thank you. He did all that stuff. He did all that stuff. I'm not going to go over it again and, that and so forth. You see it. He's done it. You're in jail and people are giving you Bibles. In the county, excuse me, you're in prison and people are giving you Bibles and lesson books and, and, and you can earn degrees in the Bible and this, that, and that from Christian organizations. That's all God. There's a guy that's over here at the county jail that we work at. There's some organization they can write and ask them for a Bible. They send them a leather-bound Bible. We give out paperback Bibles, but they give them a leather-bound Bible. It may take them uh, four, five, six, seven weeks to get it, but they get it. Don't, don't tell me God's a hard man. You know, by the way, the wages of sin is death. We all should be dead. If he was, if he was a hard man, that's what the Bible, the wages of sin is death. He didn't kill me before I got saved. He gave me 20 years. Some people, I know people got saved at 6, 70, 80 years old. That ain't a hard man. Verse 26, no, 20, 23. Well, 25. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, you have what is yours. No, I gave you the privilege and the opportunity to take and that one talent and you should have made one more talent with it at least or five or ten. No, yeah, I'll take the talent and I'm going to give it to the guy with the ten talents. The one that had five and now he got five more. Now he's going to have one more. All right. Why? Because you didn't do anything with what I gave you. I gave you the privilege, the honor, and, and the blessing. You know what? When they pass the offering plate, it isn't a bad time. It's a good time. It's another opportunity to show God that you love him and that you have faith and trust in him. Believe and trust in God. By the way, you're in jail or prison. Live for God while you're in jail or prison. Amen. Live for God there too. Amen. All right. Well, one day you're going to get out. Well, I may not get out. Whatever. I'm going to live for him. Thank you. I'm going to live for him. Um, I was afraid went and hid your town in the ground. There you have what is yours. Verse 26. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reaped where I have not sown and gathered where I have not, where I have not scattered seed. I'm not going to do this, the remainder of the thing, but I'm going to cover 26 a little bit here. And we, we're at part three and we'll, we'll do that someday. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. Do you see what I said when he was saying all that stuff up there, all those things he was saying about God? This is a saved man. This is a saved man. All right. There are saved people who because they didn't spend no time studying the Bible, they didn't spend no time faithfully going to church. They went to churches, had great music, but didn't necessarily have great teaching. So they know very little. And uh, uh, like they're saying, we're going to bind Satan. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you can bind Satan. The Bible says uh, the church can bind uh, certain things of, of the believers and so forth. And that's in Matthew 18 talking about discipline. We're not going to bind Satan. Some of these people are going to bad churches that f teach false doctrine or confused doctrine. By the way, sometimes they're teaching it and they don't realize that what they're teaching is unbiblical or untrue. They're ignorant. It's your responsibility. If you ask God, God, send me to a church that teaches the Bible right. God will do it because he's faithful. God this, God that. If you just ask him, he'll do it. God, help me quit coming. I get all these crazy prayer requests, and I'm like, why don't you pray to God and ask him to quit letting you come to jail? Why don't you ask God to deliver you from your sins? You up here, oh, pray for my kid, pray for this brother. Well, if you weren't, weren't in jail, you could go take care of your kids. You could, you could keep your marriage. You could, you could help in your community. You could do this, that, and the other. Why don't you pray for that? Quit, quit causing me. God, help me quit doing all these sins. And uh, God bless you. I love you. I pray you're listening. We got one minute. We'll do part three if my friend's got time to tape it today. And uh, 
Um, let's pray. Father, thank you for your mercy and grace. If you're not saved and you want to make sure you're saved, pray to God and ask something like this. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus. I believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. And I believe it was for me. Please save me. Please help me use my talents the way you want them used. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.